Good morning, everyone. During our road trip last weekend, one of our companions had a headache. So we quickly made a stop at our local 7-Eleven, bought the medicines we needed without any thought. Nowadays, medicines are so ubiquitous and readily available that we take them for granted. This is not the case for Filipinos who live in remote areas and those affected by disasters. But I'm getting ahead of myself. My first remote health experience was in Haiti. There was a huge earthquake in 2010, and we have to walk up the mountains to reach the community of Medor. There were no roads, there were no supplies, so we had to carry everything that we needed. When we reached the community of Midor, we immediately saw the baby. The baby has been having diarrhea for the past three days, and despite our efforts of giving IV hydration, we lost the baby. Moved by this experience, I returned to the Philippines to bring health care to the most remote areas of the country. The Philippines is an island nation, home to 110 million people. However, we know that the country's diverse terrains and um, extreme weather conditions pose significant challenges in delivering medical services to those 50 million still living in those remote areas. As a consequence, these people living in, poor er in these remote areas experience poor health outcomes due to the lack of access to services and medicines. In remote communities such as Barangay Binakalan, the habal-habal is their only way of moving around. And the habal-habal is a motorcycle where locals creatively added wooden panels to accommodate up to 10 passengers. And in the islands of Tawi-Tawi, this small boat is their only way to travel between these islands. And in both cases, transportation can be very difficult. The trips can be very expensive, especially for locals. They are prone to breakdowns, they don't run regularly, and they're highly prone to accidents. This is the reason why delivering medical supplies in remote communities can be extremely difficult and sometimes impossible. On a long boat ride to one of our remote clinics, I had the idea. The quickest way to get these medical supplies to these remote areas is to fly using drones. But the drones have to travel very long distances, and they also have to travel beyond, beyond visual line of sight across mountains and oceans. And they also have to carry cargo with them. Were the drones capable of doing this? I didn't know. I was not a drone expert, but I could definitely find out. So in 2015, I reached out to Patrick Meyer, a leading global expert on the humanitarian use of drones. And he connected me to Engineer Cruz, who's a local drone expert. And together, we formed the Philippines Flying Labs. And we have overcome numerous obstacles to bring medical cargo delivery here in the Philippines. We wanted it to be affordable. So we started with an off-the-shelf um, drone that had, from the same maker used by YouTubers and Instagrammers. And we, add, we modified the drone by adding a mounting mechanism for our cargo box, allowing us to deliver even temperature-sensitive materials such as vaccines. But these drones are pre-programmed to actually just do take off and land in just one site. They are not designed to land at a second site. So faced with this technical issue, we developed a, car, a computer, onboard computer, that will enable us to have cargo drone long flight missions and to be able to land at the second site. We also use this RUCO marker, which is like a giant QR code that we place on the ground on our target destination to enable 
uh, the second landing and to enable precision landings. But our problems are not just technical. Actually, the main obstacle in bringing medical cargo drone delivery here is regulatory. Flying beyond visual line of sight has never been done in the Philippines. So we have to engage the aviation authorities to grant us permits to do these test flights. So this involves meetings and meetings to discuss the, our new drone technology and its capabilities, and we have to reassure to the officials that our cargo drone pose no danger to the community and to the individuals. Establishing partnerships with communities and individuals is very essential because advocates for projects like these come in many forms. We have to work closely with the government officials, health officers, um, community civic organizations, community leaders, and even the military. We need allies to get this successfully off the ground. And during our three-month trial of test flights, we successfully delivered vital supplies in two scenarios, across oceans and across the mountains. And we delivered vaccines, antibiotics, medical supplies, and even TB and water samples for testing. And our cargo drone delivery is exceptionally fast, outpacing the traditional methods of delivery and transportation. The 14-kilometer journey across mountains using the Habal Habal, which usually take two hours, took only 10 minutes using our cargo drone delivery system. Similarly, the island cargo delivery from Cebu to Sipangkot in Tawi-Tawi, which would normally take two hours, was completed in just eight minutes. And aside from the speed, the quality of patient care has been positively impacted by the cargo delivery. Because now, the healthcare workers do not have to personally transport these supplies. They have more time and energy to provide high-quality care to their patients. These drone deliveries were significant milestones. We were the first in Asia to deliver mRNA vaccines using our special insulated cargo box innovation. We're also the first in Asia to use drones for medical cargo drone deliveries across the oceans. And what led to our success? Because we are locally owned, locally operated, and locally run, we were able to devise and create solutions that are very unique to our needs. Our innovation stem from necessity. Our country faces enormous challenges and waiting for others to solve our problems is not the ideal solution. We firmly believe that access to essential medicine is a human right. And our cargo drone delivery system offers a new solution to ensure that every individual, regardless of where they live, have access to these life-saving medicines. So let us all look to the future to the world where medicines are as readily available as they are in our local 7-Eleven stores. Thank you so much and thank you for listening.